So, there is a great effect in Ableton called a looper. In this video, I will show you how to set it up with any instrument so it will work seamlessly in your live performances. This video will help you see that Ableton is really simple. You might not end up using my exact workflow, but you will see the power and flexibility that's available to you with this technique. It might even be a game changer for you. Let's go. So the first thing we're gonna to need to do is get our instruments set up as inputs into Ableton. So let's do that right now. What goes well with chips? Ketchup. What goes well with drums? What goes well with an input track? A looper track? Yes. And this is the core of the technique that I use. I have two tracks set up per instrument. First track is the input track. This is where the audio or the MIDI comes in. The second track is the looper track, and this is an audio track. This is where the audio from the first track blows in and is captured as an audio loop. This is important because I want to make sure that the loop is independent from the instrument that I'm playing. So this means I can play along with my loop and adjust them independently. Let's do this with a keyboard track. So here we are in Ableton with a pretty basic set. So the first thing I'm gonna do is add a new MIDI track. Let's do that now. I'm now gonna call this one Keys In. I think it's important to name your tracks as you set them up, it keeps you organized. The first thing I'm gonna do is select which instrument's playing it. So this is for me, MIDI 4x4, MIDI in three. I've got four inputs and this is the third one, but it's also on channel two. So here, monitor is now gonna to need to be in. Let's change that to in. This is important. If you choose auto, which is the default setting on the track, the sound will only play when the track is record armed down here. If you choose in, the sound will always play because it was always listening to the track. I want this keyboard in my setup to play sounds at all times, so I choose in. Just so we can get some sounds flowing into this, I'm now gonna load a piano into this. And if everything's worked well, when I press this keyboard now, you should be able to hear the sound of the keyboard. That's great, it's all working. And at this stage, that's all I need to do on my keys in track. The other thing I'm going to do is delete these other two tracks. I don't need these. The next thing I'm gonna do is create the second track, the looper track. So I'm gonna insert an audio track here like this. I'll rename it to keys loop. This is the track that will hold the looper effect. Think of this track as your looper pedal. But before I add a looper, I need to get sound from keys in into this track. So I'm gonna select the input of this track as keys in, like this. Also, you want monitor to be in rather than off. Again, this is important to ensure that signal will flow from keys in to keys loop at all times. It, and it doesn't matter whether the record arm button is pressed or not. Quick sidebar, getting your head around monitor settings and routing settings is quite key in Ableton. If you're not sure what each of the settings do, just play around with it. This is a, a key approach, I think, with Ableton. You can make it do anything you want and it's completely open, but you need to be willing to be a bit experimental with it. Now, there's a bit of a problem. Can you hear that when I play this, the signal is doubled? I'm literally getting the piano coming through once from keys in and once from keys loop. Check it out. We don't want that. We'll fix this doubling in a second, but we'll do that using the looper effect. I'm now gonna set up a looper effect in the audio channel we've just set up. This is an Ableton Live effect, which is crucial to the system that I use. But what is looper? Aside from being a pretty amazing 2012 film about time travel, which starred Bruce Willis, it's actually my favorite Ableton Live effect. And it's one that I've been using quite a bit over the last few years. The looper is an effect within Ableton Live, which mimics a hardware looper pedal like the Boss RC1. You can use this effect to lay down a loop, then overdub on top of it. You can start, stop, and clear the looper. You can also reverse the sound. You can also do undo. There's absolutely loads of things you can do within this pedal. And we're going to load one into Ableton Live. I'm gonna go over here and I'm gonna drag, gonna go up to audio effects, delay and loop. And we're literally just gonna load looper in like this onto my keys loop and there it is. The looper effect ships with all three versions of Ableton. That's really good news. So if you wanna use this, it doesn't matter if you've got the light standard or sweet. So on the screen here, you can see the main interface of the looper effect. First thing you might notice is this large button here. It's called pedal or looper button. This is similar to the single button you'd see on many looper pedals like the Boss RC1. You hit it once to start recording, like this. Hit it again, and it will go into overdub mode. Hit the same pedal again, and it goes into playback mode. Hit it twice to stop, and hold it down to clear. So really similar to a looper button that you get on your pedals. You've also got separate controls here, so you can see we've got record, 
Overdub. Play. Stop. Undo. And that's really helpful because you can actually use all those buttons instead of having to use the single button if you want. It's important now to also look at a few of the other settings because we'll need to set these up to make this work. Song control. This allows you to control Ableton from within the effect. Very powerful. So if you want Ableton to start playing in time with your first loop, set this to start song or start and stop song. If, like me, you want the looper to follow Ableton, play in time with a track that's already playing, select none. The next setting to look at is tempo control, which is here. Here are your options, none, follow song tempo, or set and follow song tempo. If you're recording a loop on the fly and want Ableton to follow the loop that you've recorded and set the tempo to basically what you've just played, choose set and follow song tempo. If you would rather the looper took the tempo from the master track of Ableton, then select none. The final part of this is input to output, this bottom right bit here. This will help us to solve the doubling issue we've got. So the two options I, I use are either always or never. When you are performing live, you want the audio to come out of the keys in track here. This one I've just highlighted. That's where you want the audio to come out when you're literally playing live. And this is what you want your audience to hear. Even when you're recording a loop, it should still come out of this track. However, when the loop comes in, we want it to come from this track, keys loop. This is where input to output comes in. If it is on always, audio is heard from keys in, but it also flows into keys loop and is heard through this track too. So you get both tracks playing back whenever you hit the keys. If you select never, this looper effect will literally mute the keys loop track here and only play back when there is a loop playing. Check it out. And this is precisely what we want. If you're feeling fired up and excited about the possibilities of the looper effect, I would love it if you'd hit the like button below. It would really help me. Thank you. So what I'm now gonna do is I'm gonna play some piano and I'm gonna hit the looper button. I'm gonna show you all that in Ableton so you can see exactly what's happening. Hopefully you could hear there that when I played the piano, it was just coming through once, but then when the looper kicked in, it was exactly the same level and again, just coming through once. One of the key buttons on a hardware looper is the level knob, which allows you to adjust the volume that the loop is playing. Sometimes you want the loop to be a bit quieter than the live instrument that you're using, and sometimes you might want it to be a bit louder. I normally set mine up to be exactly the same level. That's how Ed Sheeran and Elise Tro set themselves up. The best way you can adjust the level using Ableton is like this. If you use the level on the track here, that allows you to easily adjust the level to where you want it to be. And I'll just show you that with the loop I just recorded. Now, I don't know about you, I love keyboard players, but they're a bit annoying. So let's add some guitars and some drums, shall we? So here we are. For the guitar tracks, you can see that I've got two tracks in the same way that I set up the keyboard track. The input track is called Guitar In, and this is where the guitar signal flows into. On this track, I've got my guitar effects, which are all native to Ableton, by the way, and work really well. I've got a video coming on that, out on that soon. And then the second track is the Guitar Looper track, and it's named Guitar Loop. Now I've also set up my drum track here as well. I wanted to show you how to set this up because you might have an instrument that has two microphones or two inputs or even five inputs like you can see here for my drums. Here you can see the five tracks to my drums. You can mix them, you can set them up. I load in an EQ on each of these to really make them sound good. Each of these tracks is outputted at the bottom here to, to drum loop, which is this drum loop track here. And that means that all those instruments flow in and then you can loop them as one within one looper. Really useful. So when I play the drums, they route to the right place and they'll be looped on this particular track. So you've got your instrument set up with loopers. The next thing you need to do is to get automation working so you can make this setup work really well. This video here will take you through the process of automating anything within Ableton using my secret source, the Bohm MIDI Translator.